Hi friends, Jim Alfredson here with the Hammond SK Pro. In the first video, we went over the general features of the SK Pro. In the second, we did a deep dive into the organ engine. In the third, I just played some music for you. And in this fourth one, we're going to dive into the piano and ensemble sections of the SK Pro and see how we can edit the sounds to be what we want them to be. The Hammond SK Pro features two non-organ voices that can be assigned to things like piano, strings, electric piano, etc. This is similar to the SKX model. The polyphony is 128 notes, and this is shared between all the voices. The organ engine is separate. It has its own polyphony. I believe that is a full uh, 61 plus 61 plus the pedal board, whatever that is. I'll put the math on the screen. But... Uh, the piano and ensemble sections share 128 notes of polyphony. Each section is pretty much the same. Um, they just have different category buttons, uh, but they operate in the exact same way. So let's kind of dive into the menu system and see what we can do to these different voices in terms of editing. So here we are on the main screen and essentially to get into our editing functions of the piano or ensemble part. We have separate edit buttons for each part. We'll just press one of those. And now we're into the main menu of the editing functions. Here we can see our general settings, including the loudness, which of course is controlled by the dedicated volume knob for each section. Pitch pen up and down, the portamento, whether that's on or off for that section the mode of the portamento, the rate, and whether it's in mono or polyphonic mode. Here's our priority for how the notes are triggered. And we use our page buttons to go through the various menus. Here's our pro chord section. What this is, is you can play a chord with your left hand that doesn't sound. You can't actually hear the chord, but then when you play a part with your right hand, uh, the chord is embedded within the right hand. In other words, you can play single note melody lines with a chord behind them. It's good for auto accompaniment situations. And we have our LFO-1. You can have various different waveforms assigned to LFO-1 here. And how they trigger. It can be free running in the background or be triggered by the note, which means the LFO will start when you hit a note. The rate, of course, delay time, attack rate, uh, key tracking. So what you could use this for is you could set up a sound that has vibrato built into it, but it doesn't instantaneously start with the vibrato. The vibrato can start at a later time as you hold the note. Say if you were doing a lead sound, it would free up your other hand uh, to be playing chords or bass or, or things like that, and now have to use the mod wheel to add vibrato. And down at the bottom here, we see these component sections. Each voice in the piano or ensemble sections can have up to four waveforms. So for example, waveform one could be the piano sample, waveform two could be a string sample, and you can layer those together in one patch. Three could be, oh, I don't know, uh, say a glockenspiel or something at the very top end of the keyboard, because these can be split across the keyboard however you want as well and then you have a fourth one as well and then this parameter here affects how much the uh, pitch is affected by the lfo filter filter mod depth amp depth so essentially the lfo can affect pitch filter or amplifier uh, the amplifier uh, envelope generator on each of these components of each patch separately and then we have two lfos so we could have one LFO set up to be uh, vibrato, for example. We could have another LFO set up to alter the filter, and that can be per component. We'll get into the components more in just a minute. Here's components. We'll, I'll, I'll, I'm going to skip over these, but we'll come back to them. I just want to show what else is in the uh, main menu for editing these uh, piano and ensemble patches. 
Here's our multi-effect one. This is the same as what we saw in the organ engine. We got tremolo, compressor, ring mod, and multi-effect one. Have our overdrive, again, the same as in the organ section. We got tube, solid state, clipping, EP amp. You can set how you want it to react to the expression pedal and the amount of drive and the blend and all that. It's the same as the organ section. MFX2, again, same as the organ section. We've got auto pan, phaser, flanger, chorus, and delay, and the delay can be mono or stereo, right to left or left to right. And then we have the equalizer for this patch. Again, this is not the master EQ. There is a master EQ in the global section as well. This is a per patch EQ. So we can set our frequency. We can set how much of that frequency we want to see. The graph changes, which is real nice, gives us an immediate visual of what we're doing. So we can do something like that if we want. And those are the basic parameters that we can edit. All right, so I'm going to just start with the basic piano patch, which sounds like this. Right? And we press our edit button to get back in here, and I'm going to go to the component menu. And you see this edit button is lit up blue. That means if I press enter, we're now into the component menu. So here's where we can actually set what sample set each of our patches is using. And as you can see, it lists them down at the bottom. And right now, it's this particular patch is using two of the four components. The first one is the standard piano uh, sample set. And then the second one, if we look at the range, the key range here, this first one goes from uh, 2C, negative 2C to 5F sharp. And then this other one goes from 5G to 8G. So essentially, the first sample set is the low notes. And then the second sample set on component four is the high notes. So they're split into two sets for whatever reason. But that leaves us two other sets to use. So for example, we could turn on set two and start using that one if we wanted. And we can set the volume of that component, what the output bus is. It can be dry or it can go through our effects. The key range, the velocity uh, curve, or actually this is just velocity in general, whether it triggers the full range of velocity. So you could have uh, a component only trigger when you're hitting the keys hard, like a say a cymbal crash or something like that. Uh, the velocity offset, the depth, that's all in this first menu here. I'm going to turn this off for just a second. And then we, if we use our page buttons, go to the oscillator section. Here's where we can actually set what sample set it's using. So we start with a category. And here's all our different categories to go through. Right? And under each category, there's multiple sets. So let's say we wanted some strings along with our piano. This is what I was talking about in the first video, how you can layer piano and strings together and not have to use both allocations, both the piano and the, and the ensemble allocation. So here's our strings. We can choose what set of waveforms we're using for those strings. I want something kind of synthy, so I'm going to use the synth string mellow. You can see it down there at the bottom of the screen. It's not highlighted yet because it's not on. We have to go back to our basic page and turn it on, and now it's on. And so we should have strings under our piano now. And we do. And we can set the volume of that layer so it can be softer underneath the piano if we want. We could also set so that they only activate in the upper octaves. Let's put this up to like, say, middle C right here. So no strings, strings up there. I think you can already see the possibilities here. We still have another component that we can use. We could, again, put in like a percussion element or maybe even an acoustic bass in the very bottom of the keyboard if we wanted. But let's keep going in through the menus here. So this is our oscillator page. We can set the transpose. We can set whether it uses the pitch bend wheel or not. Key tracking for filters, fine tune. Uh, I think this is stretch tuning for like pianos and stuff. The depth of the envelope generator. That's all in here in the oscillator page. And if we go to the pitch envelope generator, we can actually change the pitch of it. You can see all these parameters under our pitch generator. Very nice. All these parameters that we can change to make the sound do what we want. 
Here we have the delay page. And what this does is offset when it comes in. Here's our filter page. We have a low pass 12 dB filter, high pass 12 dB, and off. Right, so we could actually set this to make the strings very muted up here. You barely hear them now. Let's turn up that filter a little bit. That's really nice. It can be resonant, of course, and the key tracking. This is, again, per component. We got four components to play with. There's our filter envelope generator. Standard parameters under here. Here's our amplitude. We can change the panning. Uh, we can make it go left to right, inverse. We can fix it to a certain point in the in the stereo field with this. So you could use this to maybe, if you want to turn your uh, your patch into a mono patch and have the piano come out of the left output and all the other components come out the right output, so you could process them differently in the front of house. Here's our amp envelope generator. Again, all the standard parameters that you'd want to change. And that's about it in this section. So you can see we can we can do a lot in here. So hopefully you can see with that dive how you can set up multiple sample sets to be just on one of the allocation buttons. So for example, I've, I've made the sound right here out of all four allocations in just one patch under the uh, piano allocation. And uh, essentially it sounds like this, it's kind of fun. Kind of silly but it's a lot of fun and that doesn't even get into the organ section which can be turned on as well right and then we can also have our lead synth on at the same time And all of these voices can be assigned to different sections of the keyboard. So I could have our monophonic synth just on the top, organ just in the middle, up to four layers on one patch in the piano or ensemble allocation down here. It gets pretty powerful really quick. Because think about this, we have our piano allocation and we have our ensemble allocation. Both of these have four components each, so that's eight components. Now it's worth noting, of course, as I said in the beginning of the video, that these two allocations share 128 notes of polyphony. But that should be enough for pretty much any job that I can think of. In fact, my Kurzweil Forte can split up to 16 different voices across the keyboard, and it only has 128 polyphony as well, and I've never run out of polyphony with that, because you're not going to be playing all 16 voices at the same time. Likewise here, you're not gonna be playing all four components per allocation, so all eight components at the same time, usually. You would have like, say, strings up here, some electric piano, maybe a bass down here, maybe a real piano here, and then have your organ. The organ is not counted in the 128 polyphony. That has its own engine, its own polyphony. Likewise, the monophonic synth is monophonic, so it's not taking up any polyphony as well. Now one thing I would like to mention before we end this is there has been some talk on the internet about why a monophonic synth and why we can't have polyphonic synth sounds. We do have polyphonic synth sounds actually, they're just not in the monophonic synth section. They're under our ensemble or piano section. So in our other category under our ensemble, we have some actual lead sounds. And we have a lot of different pads. Right? 
right? We've got a lot of different polyphonic type synth sounds, like kind of Oberheim type sounds, like this. And there's actually a synth pad category in the ensemble section right here. And that gives us one of my favorite sounds, which is the warm pad. Right. There's some others in here that are very nice. Here's a pulse width modulated pad. So we do have some polyphonic synth sounds in here. They're just in the ensemble allocation in the synth pad category. Here's a couple more. big nice sounds. I don't know if anybody's noticed this yet, but when you change patches, the sound doesn't just cut off. For example, let's go to this warm pad just by itself. And now I'm going to turn it off and turn on my piano sound. It's a very nice feature. It means you can switch between your different allocations. You can even switch between different patches. And as long as the patches are relatively similar, you're not gonna hear any change in the sound that you're holding over from the other patch. Now there's a caveat there. If the new patch that you're switching to uses different types of effects, like say one uses chorus, one uses flanging or something, you'll hear a little jump because it has to go to that new effect. But in general, if you're just switching between allocations, you're not gonna have the sound cut off before you release the keys or the sustain pedal. I think that's a very great feature. It allows you to transition between one section of a song to another without worrying about your sound cutting off mid chord. So that's the piano and ensemble section of the SK Pro. It's a very powerful section. And if you have any questions about it, just let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Consider hitting that subscribe button. And in the next video, we're going to dig into the monophonic synth section. And I'm gonna spend some time on this because it's a lot of fun. Thank you, keep making music, and much love to you all.